오빠 사랑해요. He's like, oh, 나도 사랑해. And then it's just like smooching and like, long time no see, it's Vex. I don't even remember the last time I sat down to actually make a video like on purpose. I feel kind of cringe because I'm wearing this hat. Makes me look like a Korea boo. But I need to wash my hair and I wasn't going to put that on the internet for everyone to see. And the only cap I could find is this one of use stall. I don't really have an interesting opening for this video. Those of you who have been watching the recent stuff on the channel, oh don't don't you start, have seen that uh we've had quite the year. Well it's it's been it's been a it's been a year. Today as of recording this video it's the 31st of December 2023. So 2023 is almost over and I felt kind of like I don't know, I felt the urge to record something just to round off the year. Dobby's also here. He's very large. The thing I wanted to talk about was uh, why it sucks to be an international couple. Because <laughs> there's so many like popular international couples on YouTube, right? So the comments I often see are like talking about, and comments that we've received on some of our videos as well, are quite like, oh, I wish I had a Korean boyfriend. No, you don't. You, you don't, you don't wish that. <laughs> if you knew the reality of what that looks like, you wouldn't wish for that. <laughs> and it's not, it's not me complaining about my relationship or complaining about my husband. It's that um, our life has been shit this past year. <sighs> Factually, the shit that you see on YouTube, the stuff that you see on YouTube, pardon my friend, it's all from these big channels who are making buttload of money so they can afford to live luxuriously wherever they like. Not the case for the regular Joe international couple. I feel quite cringe calling us that, but I don't know a better word. Reason number one. <laughs> God, this is so cringe. Miscommunication. Now, you might think, well, you're both speaking English. He speaks English really well. Um, no, because nuance is a thing. The amount of times we have had really stupid preventative arguments that have turned really bad because we're arguing in English and he doesn't know the nuance of certain things. Like stupid arguments over like stupid little things that could have been avoided just by asking, well, what do you mean by that? Which I've kind of trained myself to do, but uh, it's it's not always doable if it's something kind of triggering to you. Because they don't, no matter how advanced they are, like ungi has been learning English for over 10 years. Like he's about as fluent as fluent can get. But there'll be like odd random things that he just doesn't know what they are. Or he'll use them incorrectly. And then I'm like, that like gets my back up. And I'm just like... <laughs> did you just say to me <laughs> luckily like i'm quite a mellow person and so is he so we can kind of get past it a lot of the time but there are other people i think who perhaps might be a bit more quick tempered that really struggle with that i don't think it's just applicable to like if you're a white person or a or whatever race person dating a korean person i think it's just for any mixed race couples in general any international couple you know <laughs> you are speaking in a different language and it's really hard to grasp nuance like luckily Yungyu is advanced enough that i can be like okay but the colloquial meaning of that is different to how you're using it and he'll understand that but Imagine if you're like someone who's there, uh, like barely knows any English and someone's coming around and just being like, oh, but colloquially that means something else. And they don't even know what the word colloquial means. Like speaking in another language is hard. I should know. <laughs> it's not all like, he's like, oh, and then it's just like smooching and like, that's not how it works. Like you've ha if you have actual conversation, there's room for miscommunication, which happens anyway, if you're both like speaking the same language natively, but I think even more so if it's a different language. So there's the language barrier is what I'm getting at. I don't know why my thoughts are so. <laughs> Second point. 
disagreements based on cultural upbringing. My God, the amount of times I have told him it's not okay to comment on a woman's weight. But culturally, in Korea, that is okay. You just you just show up to your like a funeral and your auntie just turns around and be like, you've got fatter. And that's fine. That's okay in Korea. Culturally here, obviously not acceptable. It not, I'm not saying he's told me ever that I've gotten fatter. Yeah, it's, it's, it's been a conversation and at times it's been an argument. <laughs> and there's just kind of like one example of many things like something like washing the dishes. We were brought up doing it very differently or eating habits. The amount of times I've commented like he's, he's lucky <laughs> that I have the palate that I do because I really like Asian food. He wants to eat rice all the time. Imagine if he was dating someone who didn't have that palate. Like, it just wouldn't work. Because food is culture, culture, right? And the cultural palate, I guess you could say, um, in Korea or in Japan as well, and he's always telling me that it's very similar, is so different to the palate here. Rice, potatoes, spicy, salty myself like i tend to sometimes i just crave like potatoes i can't help it it's it's in it's in my veins my point is more like if you were a westerner that doesn't like asian food it's just not gonna work because but likewise if you're a korean person who doesn't like any western food that's also not gonna work so i feel like both parties have to be quite flexible because if you end up with someone who's with two people who aren't flexible it's just not gonna work there are a lot more opportunities i guess is my point for there to be issues and disagreements and therefore arguments i guess typically um from what i've seen from other like gukje couple channels on the internet it's often like a westerner that's moved to korea or to japan or blah 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 um because westerners typically in my experience are more flexible in their mindset i think it's probably more about the whole mixed culture thing in Western countries versus Korea and Japan, which are really, really, <laughs> seriously, just such monocultures. Oh, and to the third and final and worst point, immigration. If you're traveling to Korea, let's say, and you're hoping to meet yourself an oppa, weigh up your options first, girl, like, my God. If you've watched the, I think it's like four parts, the four part series that Ungu has made about our immigration, his immigration process to come here. Like no beef if you're planning on staying in Korea or Japan or wherever the heck, like no problems then. But if you want to bring them back to your home country, <sighs> Woe betide you if you are British and you want to bring your man back to your home country. I, I went to Korea and I never had plans to settle there long term. I'm talking with my hands so much. I don't know why. This is a habit at this point. I just wanted to live here with my husband, man. I never planned to stay in Korea forever. They would pay us to have children there because their birth rate is so terrible. And he was telling me it's like 0.6% these days and it's like the lowest in the world. Like, they would pay us to have babies there. I plan on having children, but I just didn't want to settle in Korea. I wanted my parents nearby. They made us feel like we were criminals. So honestly, it's been, like, one of the hardest experiences of my life. I've never felt so dismayed by being a British citizen before in my life. They didn't want us here. And they made that so freaking obvious. Like, so, if I go back to the beginning, we filled out whole paperwork, which is an electronic form, and paid a thousand pounds ish just over for the visa processing fee and that is forfeit if they refuse you you just lose it paid 1500 for the nhs surplus charge it was supposed to be done in two months six months later we still hadn't heard anything then it was about seven months after the application was processed we got the refusal the first refusal through stating that they doubted that we were a real couple even though on the website it says on the gov.uk UKVI website which is the UK v 
Visas and Immigration Service, UKVI. The UKVI website it says, basically it says, to paraphrase, if you have been if you are married in a marriage that is legally recognised in the UK, which we got married in the UK, our wedding video is somewhere on our channel. You can go and watch it if you would like proof of that, but I don't know why you would. We got married in the UK and that automatically should qualify him for the spouse visa. Did it though? No. They didn't even believe that we were in a real relationship because we hadn't provided proof of having cohabitated for more than two years. All of that was in our fiancé visa application. So they'd already had all that evidence to satisfy the fiancé visa application. So they refused us based on that. We appealed it, um, got the next refusal through about three or four months later, saying that they admit that it was wrong for them to refuse us based on our relationship status, because our relationship clearly is genuine and subsisting, their words. But... Now they don't believe we meet the financial requirement and we had misclicked saying that we couldn't provide proof in this application. So based on one misclick, they took us to court when we spoke to the solicitor and he said that they should have checked with us because we had satisfied that requirement in the previous application. They took us to fucking court. Being in, oh, being in court was so surreal. I felt like I was going to vomit. And they've, they've changed the requirements now. It's double what it was financially. So if we'd gotten kicked out, we wouldn't have been able to come back again. We would have had to go back to Korea. And we would, the likelihood of us saving enough money to be able to meet the financial, the new financial requirement, which is over £100,000 for savings is very slim in terms of me being able to sponsor him i would need to be in this country while he is in korea working a job where i earn over thirty nine thousand pounds a year which in my line of work would take me about 10 years to get to so basically it just kind of ruled out the idea of going back to korea and reapplying so we would be forced to go and settle in korea instead at least we won so we can actually start making plans for the future now but it's been he came to the uk in june 2022 and it's now nearly 2024 and he's finally looking at getting his visa and his paperwork through to be able to actually live here as a real human he doesn't have right to work, doesn't have right to drive anymore because his license expired. It was only good for a year for international driving. Doesn't have right to rent. Like he came here for me. He came here because I wanted to be here. I wanted to settle here. I wanted to have a family, buy a house. I wanted to have children with my parents nearby. Like he made that choice for me. And then had to go through nearly two years. <sighs> we could have been separated again. Like why, why do we need to be treated like criminals just for wanting to be together? It's not like we're criminals. I'm a contributing member of society. I pay my taxes. We went into the courtroom and I just kept, I couldn't even sit. I just stood there and I kept thinking like, why do we need to be treated like this? Just because we want to live here. This is my home country. Like, <laughs> I have a passport for this country. The immigration situation here is an actual joke. Like, they couldn't make it possibly any more clear that they don't want anyone else from other countries to live here or to move here. I'm surprised that he lasted a year and a half purposeless in a foreign country without saying F this and just going back to Korea. I'm surprised that the arguments we've had haven't led to us breaking up.
And I'm surprised that the stress of everything hasn't put more of a strain on us than it did. I haven't been in a good place. He hasn't been in a good place. But we've still made it through. Unless you're prepared to face all of that just to be together. It's not for you. I hate doing all these dramatic pauses. I'm going to cut them all out. But Jesus. <sighs> money stress and lifestyle stress it's just such a wild feeling you know you kind of just take for granted that your home country is always going to welcome you i didn't expect to get tearful in this video i'm trying to feel optimistic now because the year is finally over is hopeful for all the things the new year is gonna bring please wish us luck and happy new year <laughs>